Hey guys, how are you today? Okay, if you've seen my August favorites video, you know that my newest favorite art supply or gadget is my Arc Punch and the whole disc bound um, journaling planner system. I am in love with it. It's so easy. That's probably why I'm in love with it. Um, I made these two little books right, right away with it. This one first. This one is full of my most often used planner stickers and it measures let's see, about oh, let's do this way seven and a half by four and a half I made the cover back and front covers out of this chopping mat um, set from the Dollar Tree um, it comes in a pack of two. They cut really easily with a standard uh, paper cutter or craft cutter, and they punch fabulously with the arc punch, like with not without a problem. They're this like frosted color. I cut an inside uh, front and back cover out of some scrapbooking cardstock I had. This is from Web Webster's Pages. I think the paper pack is called Nest, maybe. And then I cut some two and a half inch wide strips that were the height of the book out of just white um, cardstock and I used some tape runner to attach my most often used planner stickers to the front and back of each one of those strips and now I have an easy little sticker journal that I can just flip through re really easily when I'm working in one of my journals or my planner to just pull off a sticker and as you can see I have this thing for Korean planner stickers and Hida stickers. <laughs> um, but they're really easy to get to and flip through. Much easier than, I still have my large sticker storage binder and that's great for the bulk of my stickers. But when I just specifically want a planner sticker, which is more often than not, I it's really a pain to dig out the whole big binder just to get a planner sticker. This way I can just have them in here. And when one of these strips is all used up, I can just pull the whole thing out very easily and cut a new strip and put it in or pull the stickers off and glue something else to that. So I love that. I do have this um, rubber band on here to just keep it all together. It's a little bit fat. I made this one, which is even fatter. Um, these are the larger rings. These are the smaller ones. I have a sticky note addiction and those of you who've been watching my channel for a while know this. And as a um, team lead for American Greetings, I was a, the <laughs> sticky note queen. I think I drove the team crazy with the sticky notes. But anyway, I love a good sticky note and I love putting them in my planners and my journals. And I wanted to take my collection of most favorite sticky notes and put them in a similar kind of book to the planner stickers. Only in this case, I made pockets. And um, for the pockets, I used um, retail packaging. So I used to be in a gift shop where I sold arts and crafts and things and I actually worked as a cashier there. And what I've done is I've taken um, these clear bags which are from clearbags.com and this is um, B65. These are 4 and 5 sixteenths by 6 and 9 sixteenths. And I put a piece of white cardstock in them. And then I chopped the top of the bag off because it has a self-adhesive flap. And I don't need that. And I basically just used that to create these pages with pockets that on each side that I can slip my um, sticky notes into. And I can easily reach in, pull it out, stick one in my planner, and then put it back. I love it. Because they're sticky notes and they're bulky, um, it got really fat really quick. So, especially for this one, I've just taken a Smashbook rubber band and just use that to keep it closed. So, I really love this idea so much that I decided I wanted to do one more. I really want to take my watercolor sample booklet, which I made quite a while ago, and I want to create it in something like this, recreated in something like this, that I can just take the sheet out, watercolor with it, stick it back in here. I love that idea. Um, so we're going to take it apart. 
So we're going to take, this is the Daniel Smith information, so we're going to pull eat that out and each one of these out. Now the Daniel Smith has a, um, a color dot sample chart you can buy. They are come on eight and a half by 11 sheets, which is what these are from. And um, I cut them down to fit in this book. And you get a little sample dot of each one of their 238 colors, which is fabulous. And that way you can try out colors before you, you buy a whole tube. And I've taken a little piece of acetate and duct taped it to the front of each one of these little cards after I cut it down so that I could be flipping through the book and if this little, if I've gotten the little dot wet, I don't have to worry about it smearing everywhere because the acetate will protect it. Which I think I'm going to leave on there, but we'll, we'll see in a minute. Let's get this apart first. Uh, Quar watercolors, which are made by Golden, also have some sample sheets. And I have some of those in here. And those determined the size of this book. But now... We might be cutting those down now. Let's we'll find out. All right. First, let's get all these out. There is a video on me putting this together um, the first time on my YouTube channel. I'll try to find it and link it in the description below, but if I forget, somebody remind me. Oh, this one might be hard to get out. Oh, there we go. There we go. It has a piece of paper in here, so let's take the paper out. Now this one had a piece of like parchment paper that I just taped this way. So I'll probably leave that. Uh, wow, that was in there really tightly. <laughs> that, was, that was really tight in there. I don't know if I'm gonna keep these pieces of paper in here, but we'll keep them together for, for the moment. Aren't these colors pretty? All right, so we're gonna set that aside. We don't need that. All right. So uh, yet again, the core samples I think are gonna determine the overall size. Let's see. I could cut this down a bit, but the way they have the dots arranged, I can't cut it down too much, and I'm gonna need something to um, an edge to punch on it. So I do think it's going to determine the size. So what size is this? This is five by five. Alrighty. So we're gonna need a front and back cover. So, and I'm gonna want a couple of divider tabs. So this is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. That I'm gonna cut now into five by five squares, hopefully. I think I'll need like four five by five squares. So. I'm gonna leave one long. I'll show you why in a minute. Or do I wanna do? Um, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna leave this one long for a second. And we're going to make a tab on a couple of these using the envelope punch board. And for the first one, I'm going to just line it up with the center of the punch on one end. And then I'm going to go down to about the two inch mark. I'm going to line up this edge with the two inch mark and 
punch again. Then with the second one, I'm going to start at two and I'm going to go down um, to four. Okay. Then I'm going to take, go back to the paper cutter and I'm going to line up the bottom of these divots with the groove in the cut paper cutter and I'm going to cut up to the tab and then I'm going to skip over to the other end and cut up to the tab and then you have a tabbed page so let's do the other one And then let's cut these both at five inches, lining up our tabs now with the five inch mark. There we go. Okay, I do. I, I don't know why I put the paper cutter away because we need that. I do want to trim these a little bit. I'm going to pull the parchment paper off carefully and we are going to cut this at the fold to start with Oops. and then I want to cut uh, about I don't know half an inch or so off the one edge yeah, that'll work. Okay, so let's do that to all of them. Oh, and then we can probably reattach this after I, after I trim it. And then give the little piece of parchment a trim. If, your if you've done this and your tape is not sticky anymore, you can put a new piece of tape. Mine is still sticky. I think it's going to be fine. Probably it's still sticky because this outer covering of this paper is glossy. Oops. And I'm, I'm placing it away from this edge because this is where we're going to punch for the discs. Now these, this disc binding system, you know, was intended for planners and that sort of thing. But, you know, think outside the box. Why couldn't you use it for an art journal and do your loose pages, <coughs> do your pages loose and then punch them to put into a master journal with your arc punch. That would be a really easy way to bind them um, rather than stitching or anything like that. I think it's a fabulous idea. It's very easy. And as you all know, I'm the lazy crafter, so I really prefer something that's easy. There's nothing like a stitch journal, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'm not going to stop making hand stitch journals, but this is really, really easy. Now, I do think I'm going to stick, um, I think I'm going to punch this piece of card watercolor paper that came with the core samples and like have it this way with the right samples okay so that all works now we um, want to take our two divider tabs and I want to label them one of course is for the core and then one is for the Daniel Smith colors And I want to get to the bottom here somewhere and I want to get that little card I pulled out in the beginning this one and I want to pull all of this color fastness um, coding information and granulation information off of here 
if I can, or cut it off if I can't. And I want to put it on the tab that's going to be for the Daniel Smith watercolors. Now we're going to, oh. okay, let's get out some glue, need some glue. These are really sticky because the tape that's on here is still sticky. <clears throat> I'm going to just use my Elmer's Extreme quick drying school glue. First, we'll put the name. And in case you didn't get a clue that they were watercolors, <laughs> we'll put extra fine watercolor on there. Oops. 238 color chart. You can order the Daniel Smith color chart from the Daniel Smith website. Um, you might be able to get it at your local art supply store also if they carry Daniel Smith paints. Um, the core sample cards you can get from art supply stores that carry core paints or I know that I actually wrote to um, Golden via the core watercolor website and they sent me some. Um, so whatever is more convenient for you all. And this kind of sample dot sheet is a great way too to carry watercolors with you. And if you have like um, peerless watercolors, you could make a book that includes whatever dot sh um, sample dots you have and some peerless too and, and do the same thing. Figure out what size will work for you. All right. We're going to label both of these. I'm going to print some labels for the front cover also. Oops. Helps if I spell the words right. You of course don't have to print use a labeler if, if you have if you want to you can just write it by hand. I have a labeler so why not use it my writing uh, I'm not a big fan of my handwriting. Okay, so cut our words apart. Now, no matter what kind of book you're doing, whether it's a sticker book or it's a watercolor sample book, the basic steps are the same. Figure out what size you want the book to be. cut your pages, get it everything ready, and then the easy part, binding it together is the easy part. And this is a Brother P-Touch labeler before somebody asks. <laughs> had it for a long time.
Okay. Throw our little bits and pieces away. Now we've got our sections and our front and back cover. Now the next thing we need to cut before we start punching is I want to put some clear plastic protection on the cover. I don't think this piece is big enough. Let's see. Oops. No, it's not wide enough. I love this stuff so much I save all of the pieces until I know for sure I can't use them. So we're going to cut a long inch strip. And then two five inch squares, hopefully. So that's what I mean. I cut it with the same paper cutter that I cut my paper with. Now, it might dull the blade a lot quicker than the paper would, so I would definitely um, maybe even designate one um, blade that's just for cutting the, the paper stuff with. That's not a bad idea. Okay, so now we're ready to do some punching, and I'm going to unlock my arc punch and turn it the other way so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use one of the plastic sheets to start and I'm going to center it with about the same amount of space on the top and the bottom. Try to set, I should say, try to center the these little things that are going to punch the holes where the discs go. I'm going to try to center them on the edge of the page. And when I get it centered, I'm going to push this guide up that's right by my finger so that it sits right there. Let's see. Okay. And then I'm going to punch. And then it does that. I don't know if can you see that? Let's see, wait. Can you even see that? So, and so once I have the guide set, I can go ahead and I can just put all my pages in and, and sit them on the guide and push them all the way in. And it's going to punch them all the exact same. Now on these, um, these have already been pre-cut, so I'm thinking that we need to do something like what I did with the stickers. So let's hang on to let's hang on to those for just a second. Let me think about it while I punch all the core ones. Because if I punch them the way they are. It might punch off something that I don't want it to. I think that we're going to revisit these. How many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of them. If we use up the scraps. Let's see. Need the paper cutter again. If we use up the scraps to, how big is this? This is two and a half inches.
So basically I'm just going to make some binding strips. And this is not enough, but I'm just using up the scraps of paper I had in front of me to see if it's going to work. And I'm going to take one of my binding strips now and I'm going to slide it in here and push it up against the guide. Yeah, and then I can tape this to here and stick it in the book. That will work. I need a whole heck of a lot of them. They're about one and a quarter inch, one and a half inch wide. They don't have to all be the same width. That one's really skinny. Let's see if I can get it in there. You do want them wide enough that they hit the guide. That skinny one was maybe too skinny. We'll see if it's going to work. Okay, so now we're going to need some tape. or staples. Actually, I could do staples. Staples would be better. Let's do staples. I don't think the glue is going to stick to the duct tape, and I don't think the tape will either. So what I'm thinking is if I take my strips and I staple them to the card, not to the acetate that's on here, but to the cardstock at the top and at the bottom. This is the Rain Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. Yep. That works. Now my strips are the same height as the book, but my little cards, the paint swatches are actually on, aren't all. So some of them are going to be um, shorter than others. That one's not going to work. That one's that that's that that one I didn't punch very well. Um let's see if I can punch it again. I didn't have it stuck all the way in there, I don't think. No, oh, there we go. Because that part that I mispunched is not going to show anyway, so we don't have to throw that away. Oops. Just try not to get your staple on the paint dot because I don't know. I don't know that that's going to be a good idea. Let's see. I do think I'm going to have to dig out some more paper. You could use the scraps from your cutting mat, but this kind of project, whether you're doing a, a paint swatch, a little booklet, and you're doing this, or you're doing the sticker booklet, I did the little tabs the same way. I just cut them for the sticker booklet a, booklet a little wider, and I just used scrap cardstock. I didn't even use like watercolor paper. I just used office supply cardstock on the sticker book. Okay, let me get some more cardstock and I'll be right back. Okay, so I cut a few more pieces of paper. I'm still not sure I have enough, but I wanted to come back on camera. And um, one of the things I like about the arc punch is it's really heavy duty. And like I can put three sheets of cardstock in here and put them all in here at the same time, slide them all the way in, and it punches them with no problem. Just like it punches the plastic of the cutting mat with no problem. 
not all of the disc punches are created equally. And this one has really good reviews um, for really being able to punch through lots of materials without um, a problem. So I'm gonna keep stapling and I'll be right back. Okay, when you go to store your punch, you can depress the handle and then slide it to the lock side and it compacts it so that it's easier to store. There is a little tray here that holds all the little punches that you can pull out so it's not real messy. So now that we have all our pages punched and created, and again I've made a really <laughs> made a made a really fat book again. That's okay. We're gonna put the large rings in here, I think. These are one and a half inch rings. And you just pop them into the little punch punched out sections. It's so much easier to do, I have to tell you, than I have a zutter and I like my zutter bind it all, but this is so much easier, I have to tell you. And it's easier to change the pages out too. And you know, if you decide you want to move something around, um, you don't have to unbind the journal and rebind it in order to change pages or add something later. It's very versatile that way, and I love that about it. So you just keep going like this and putting them all on the rings until you've got them all on here. Now when I did the sticker one, I put it together first and then I went back and put the stickers on the little strips. Either way you do it, there's no wrong way. I really like the idea of um, doing an art journal in one of these because you can just, like I said, you can do it loose. And then just add it to your book. You're j only limited by the size of the rings. That's the only thing. Now, um, the rings do cross over from like um, to different systems. The rings are all, they're slightly different, but they're basically the same. They're the same enough to work no matter what punch you have. So whether you have arc rings or happy planner rings, um, they will work. They just don't come in lots of sizes. So like if you want to make a big giant fat journal, it's not going to work. You're going to have to do it like in a couple pieces, or I should say a couple parts. Let's see if we can get this all together. It's getting fat. I knew that was going to happen. It's going to be like my post-it notebook. <laughs> you could, of course, do one for, you know, if you have watercolor samples like this or something like this, you could do one for each brand. As I was going through the samples, I realized how many metallic watercolors Daniel Smith has. I'd forgotten that. And I was thinking about adding some proper artist well, uh, metallics to my collection of paints. I do have Twinkling H2Os, but I was thinking about adding some proper artist quality paints. 
I might take a second look at the Daniel Smith ones. So there you go. Look at that. So I'm going to just take the extra rings and put them in my box. Um, each one of these packs comes with 12 ring expansion rings. And these are, um, the ARC ones only come in certain colors. The Happy Planners come in more colors. Plus they have this cute heart in the middle. Um, they only have nine pieces and they're a little more expensive than the ARC rings, which have 12. They don't come in as many colors, but they're cheaper. So, so here we go. Now we have a watercolor sample book and I've got all of my Daniel Smith samples. Oops, one missed, I missed one. Let's see, look at all of these, um, oh, missed another one. Look at all of these metallics that I forgot they had so many fabulous metallic paints. So I'm glad I did this because I may have to go back through this and take a look at some of these. And then we have our core paints. So fabulous. So think about um, whatever binding system you have, think about creating some little booklets for yourself with your most favorite um, tools or um, supplies that you want to be able to access all the time, like your planner stickers or sticky notes, or in this case, uh, watercolor samples. And this is a cute little small book. Like I said, you could also do something like this if you have Peerless. And you could even combine like Quar or Daniel Smith samples and Peerless all in the same book. And then this would be cute to like take with you traveling. All right, that's it for today, everybody. I hope it gave you some ideas of what you can do. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye.